All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our class on prospecting. And this is our last in the series of 25 classes, and we will begin next month with networking versus not working, 10 second and 30 second intros, two minute intros, and then we're gonna get very focused on our trade show, which is coming up in December on December 4th. So, you know, basically the, the question you gotta ask yourself is how are you doing with prospecting? And now during COVID, this is all a very different kind of scene, but how are you doing? You gotta be honest with yourself. You know, networking is something important and are, are you making the most of networking? Are you really giving yourself a, a networking goal? Um, a sure sign that we're over networked and you're getting sloppy is not having one-to-ones, not giving yourself a goal. Um, so if you see that happening, if you're just going through the motions, maybe cut out an event or two and get more out of the events that you're doing. Chambers, you know, same thing. You know, it's great that people are members of Chambers of Commerce, it's great community, it's, it's all of that stuff. But are you a member of the subcommittees? Are you really getting involved? And remember what we had said um, in our networking versus not working, that it's better to go to two events 12 times a year and 12 events twice a year. You know, get to know the people in the committees, have one-to-ones with them. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. And are you taking advantage of those relationships and really growing through the opportunities of a chamber or a Kiwanis or any of those types of organizations with subcommittees? BNI, I think we all have our opinion on the BNI and the tips of the world, but same thing. Are you having the one-to-ones or are you just going through the motions? Or are you meeting with the same people and you're talking about the same things um, and not really asking for the referrals and, and more hoping, hoping to get them? Um, meetups, you know, I, I, it's like, why? Why do them? They're awful. But... Um, same thing, you know, and it, it's not a bad place to cut your chops and to get comfortable with your new 30 second intro or whatever it might be. And I shouldn't say they're awful, but um, my experience with meetups is not the best. Um, doesn't mean I haven't gone, but try to make the most of all these opportunities. Many of you are giving talks and seminars, and if you're doing it just to do it, why do it? You know, I, I have a, an old friend, uh, guy who used to be a good friend, and I'd always say, so how'd your talk go? And he'd always say, oh, it was great. And they loved it. And I'd say, okay, so, uh, you know, how many referrals did you get? How, how many books did you sell? Or what, you know, oh, well, no, none of that. So it felt good to him. So be aware of that. Be aware of why you're doing these things. It costs us time, money, and effort to give a talk, to have a trade show, to post a video, whatever it is. So we need some kind of measurable barometer as to if this worked or not, or if it just feels good, again, why do it? Yeah, and I understand it helps our branding, but we need a hook. So maybe the hook is, uh, you know, David Quick, I know you're on here, so maybe it's a, a free over um, overhaul, or not overhaul, but diagnostic of your system or something along those lines. Or, you know, for Lois, it might be um, a free evaluation. You know, invite me out to come out, we'll take a look at your workout program, and I'll give you a free evaluation. Or, you know, with Sarah, it could be a free, um, uh, something, free meal or something like that. But have a hook, have a, a way of capturing information and a reason for doing these things. Also, I think it's real important to know who our centers of influence are know who we want to be introduced to. So David, I know for you, it's accountants, right? You're very interested and focused on accountants, but it's more than that because I mean, accountants are great because they're a great center of influence and referral source um, and their computers are of utmost importance to them most of the year uh, or several times a year. But maybe there's other centers of influence that are both Mac and PC. So it could be agencies, it could be printers, it could be a, a lot of people. Um, but know who your centers of influence are and know who you want to be introduced to. Don't forget when you go to parties and social events, there's a two foot rule that you're allowed to ask anybody within two feet of you, 
what they do. And, you know, just, it's funny, just happened to be bike riding a couple weeks ago. So I was out riding my bike as I do most days at the end of the day. And this truck went whizzing by me and then further up the road, he's pulled over and he flags me down. He waves me down to ask me questions about my bike. And I was a little skeptical, but he seemed like a decent guy and he turned out to be a great guy. And, um, I, I, we were talking about my bike and he wants to buy it and blah, blah, blah. And that, that's fine. And it looks like that will happen. And, um, then I said to him, because it's the two foot rule, I said, so what do you do? And it turns out he was the owner of a $2 million plus business with a bunch of employees and going through some difficulties. And lo and behold, he will become a client in the next week or two. And we're actually talking today. So if I hadn't asked, so what do you do? And then I could say that I coach owners and have a sales training business. You know, that's what started that conversation. Another area for prospecting where we're probably all not doing as good a job as we could, and it's a natural, is LinkedIn. So who here is using LinkedIn well? I am so guilty of this. It is the last place I go to post something. I don't know why. Uh, it just feels different, and I, it needs to be the first. You know, that really needs to become a focus for me and probably for a lot of us. Um, and if we're not willing to do it, maybe that's an area where we hire someone who can go on Sales Navigator and, and do this kind of stuff. I, and the alternative is what? Buying a list and cold calling? So if we do all these things that we had mentioned, we don't need to cold call. I've never cold called. I'm certainly not buying a list and going through it. That, that sounds like torture, I can't imagine. Uh, doing that. Now, there there are ways of doing it. And David, I know you're involved with a program where you can buy a list and you send very clever emails and mailings and, and that stuff. And absolutely that can work. And I think snail mail today is a great medium because, you know, there's not as much mail as there used to be. And people probably open their mail. And if you've got something clever in there, uh, that could work really well for you. Um, social media in general. How well are we using Facebook? Is it just fun and games or are we searching different groups? You know, are we on Facebook? If our target is uh, accountants, are we targeting accounts? Are we looking for accounts? Are we joining groups for accountants? You know, am I doing it with entrepreneurs? I'm starting to, um, you know, so I'm trying to turn some of those platforms into more productive uh, uses for me. Um, canvassing. Knocking on doors. I have start, started a couple of in businesses, some for me, some for others, by knocking on doors. I remember as a kid, I worked for an, apparel, uh, an embroidery company. It was the world's oldest and largest embroidery company. And I would knock on doors on 7th Avenue. I'd do a building a day or half a building a day. The Empire State Building took a little longer. But there was a lot of business that came from that. And 20 plus years later, they still have those accounts. And it was a skill. And, you know, you need to know how to do these things and to practice doing these things. And it can be done virtually. Um, I, I think there is a way of uh, approaching people virtually, either at um, different chambers and finding people. Um, but there are ways of knocking on doors. Um, and sometimes, yeah, it is picking up the phone um, after finding out who it is you want to meet, but you need to have your line. Um, and, you know, sometimes, so again, David, I'm not picking on you, but your client or your product is an easy one. So being in the IT industry, the beauty of that industry is whoever they're using now, eventually they're probably going to screw up. So being second in line is not a bad place to be. And you can always just leave it where, well, if you ever have a problem, you know, we guarantee you 24 hour turnaround. We'll, we'll always get back to you. And we do focus on Macs and PCs and, and we'll even work with as few as one. Um, that makes someone very attractive. So if they call their big PC person and their kid just got a Mac, um, it's an in. It's a monkey's paw, a monkey's fist, and it's a place to start. So in terms of prospecting, I really want you to think about the opportunities that um, 
are out there and maybe you're not taking advantage of. I was recently in an, a phone store, it was um, an AT&T store and we were doing some work and I asked them if I could put up a plexiglass display of my trifold and they said, sure. And so there it sits, you know, and business owners go in there all the time. So sometimes it's taking a shot, sometimes it's just asking if you can do something, but we all have our favorite places that we eat or we go or we do, and maybe those are places that will allow you to leave materials behind. Um, and that's why I was always like to stay within my circles when I shop and, and do things, and people generally know what it is I do for a living, and I know what they do for a living because I've asked them, and we've had those conversations. So prospecting is not what it used to be. Um, I, I think there's a lot of opportunities out there for a lot of us to do this a lot better. Um, and I highly, highly recommend you start taking advantage of it um, and have a very strong fourth quarter. And it starts now. So I'm Chris Lipper from On the Bus Sales Training, and I hope that was helpful for you. And that's chapter 19 from my book. Any questions?